Hello and welcome. It's the chat. I am Manny. My guests on the program is an amazing personality. But I have known him for as long as 30 years or more. But he is living in exile and has since been in exile for over 26 years. Tsunji Oyelano is a social crusader, a multi-award winning high life musician, a performer, folk song composer, a retired lecturer, the former leader of the defunct Benders Band, the 70s and 80s music band, and a co-composer with Wale Shoinka. Born on 4th October 1939, Tunji attended Abiyokuta Grammar School, Ogun State, after which he attended the University of Ibadan, where he studied theater arts. He eventually became a lecturer at the same university. While in service, he attended Cardiff University in Wales, where he obtained a postgraduate diploma and also attended the New York University, all in a bid to hone the craft of his art. While at the University of Ibadan, he was in charge of folk and contemporary music at the Department of Theatre Arts, where he displayed remarkable talent in his ability to work with playwrights and directors to bring songs to life for performances. Considered one of the most popular Yoruba musicians, his musical dexterity led him to set up several musical bands, the first of which was The Benders. They released their first record, Agbalode, in 1971, which became an instant hit. In the early 80s, he also teamed up with Wale Shoinka to record musical albums that satirized the corruption of the Nigerian political elite. He is credited with having sold the most albums by a Nigerian high-life musician. Although Tunji has acted in countless stage performances before the early 80s, his first acting appearance on television was in the popular TV series Surade Taylor sitcom on NTA and was famous for the lead role he played. His performance took him on several tours around the world. In one of his tours with Nobel laureate Wale Shoinka, they composed I Love My Country and in 1996 they were both charged with treason and forced into exile by Sania Bacha while touring internationally with Shoinka's play The Beatification of Area Boy. He is a regular feature at the MUK restaurant, a rendezvous for Nigerians in London who desire a taste of real Nigerian delicacies while they are treated to Nigerian's golden era music rendered by the maestro himself Tunjio Yelano. Until recently, the octogenarian and his wife continued to play host to the throng of patrons they enjoyed daily at the MUK since 2003. Their union is blessed with children and they reside in the United Kingdom. Welcome to the program, Tunji Oyelano. How are you today? Not too grand, not too bad either. I mean, this is not the picture I knew some way back, you know, um, 20 or 30 years ago. I'm talking about, you know, the days when you were playing, you know, um, music at your good state hotel. Who taught you how to play music? If you went to Abelkutagrama School, Kuti, there's a Reverend Kuti, Fela's father, was the principal. You must learn music, the theory, from class one. And you stop learning music, in, in the theory, in class three. And when you get to form three, if you are good, you may become a music leader. Fela was the music leader uh, before me. I was supposed to be a music leader after him. But unfortunately, he repeated class three, he wasn't promoted to class four. So he robbed me of the chance of becoming a, a, a music leader after him. You wanted to become a lawyer. Did you yeah, know? I wanted to become a lawyer when I was in the elementary and the secondary school. So I, I tried to, to, master, to, to master Latin. I was 
I wasn't joking with my Latin classes at all. Because I, I thought that Latin was important for, for law, you know. But, you know, by the time I left grammar school, I had I'd, I'd been swept off my feet by, you know, uh, entertainment. Entertainment, and then people playing guitar, singing, doing sketches, uh, you know, on radio. I was on BBC doing a lot of, a lot of variety programs. Not only that, doing a lot of narration of two programs on B, on B, on the NBC rather. You understand me? I was in the I was doing schools programs for NBC also. Look, I was so busy that um, I could not even manage everything that I was doing then. I know that you left. You know, after primary school, you went to a Bebuta Grammar School, and then. Uh, Afterwards, you met Wale Shoinka. Afterwards, I, met, I went to work with Kosoko. Kosoko, and then after that, Secretary. you met Wale Shoinka. Then when did your music take a bow? My first recording was uh, 19... Let me, find, let me think. 1959. 1959. That was EMI, Papa. What made you go to a studio to record you know, the music? What, you know, energized you for that? It was Odoni Rogi. Odoni Rogi was EMI's uh, uh, producer. And when we started the band, which was 1959, he, 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 I've been composing. I've been composing for the band. We were playing music by me. Then he had a balode and said, ah, come on, record this for EMI. Was that your first music? Yes, my first hit. He said, "Well, the court for I had others, but Agbalodi was the one that that actually you know, uh, attracted him." And he said that he come out recorded for EMI because he was he, he was Fela's producer then. Also, he, said he wanted he was Fela's producer, he was Jeff Buckner's producer for EMI. He was the producer of all these young artists who were who were popular in the 50s. Now he said I should come and record a quality for him. I said, no. I said, I didn't want to record it for any big uh, recording company. And I wanted to do it with a private company where I can make my money without cheating. I don't want any company to, to exploit, exploit me. He begged and begged and begged as I refused. And at the end of the day, uh, Shengu and I supported. He recorded the music, and he 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 uh, uh, he brought it out on on a, on a, on a single, a melody, and it became a big, 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 big success. Why did you leave the EMI at that at that stage? The white person who was the uh, managing director of EMI called me and said, do you, do you, would you like EMI to advance you with instruments? You understand me? Which you can pay for later. So, he gave me the, the, what do you call it now? The advance of about 11,000 pounds. That's a huge money. That's a huge amount of money. It was indeed. You ever to pay over the years? Yes, to take all the instruments I needed out of EMI. That's how I started the band with that instrument. And so I, I will be paying the money gradually back to EMI through my royalties. You understand me? So I started by recording for EMI. But till today, I did not gain from that because they were just, it's just called keeping my money. My one, the ones that I made for EMI, uh, saying they were paying for my instruments till today. <laughs> I didn't get a combo as well as for EMI. <laughs> if you, if so, you, if you, so if I you got have, angry and left. How many albums did you three did albums. You record? Three albums. albums. You recorded yeah. only three albums and then you left EMI. EMI was not paying me any royalties at all. They came to be taking money for my instruments. Which I take from them over the years and all the rest of it. I would not earn royalty from anybody. Why is that so? 
because I've been cheated. I, the MI did not pay me. Uh, and uh, they are the, my main, pro, main main producers. Did you approach another recording company after EMI? I went to England. I recorded for uh, the uh, trans uh, transcription center. Brand new Malaysia. Brand new New Year. Malaysia BA. Maybe I did before. Till today in London. Yeah, I'm still taking royalty from that one. There is a company still selling these records that I recorded in 1965. I still paying me royalties. But the EMI, EMI in Nigeria have never paid me EMI till today. Do you hope to challenge that at any no. cost? No. Do you feel cheated? Of course, indeed. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I was cheated. You were playing at the Ogo State Hotel. Oh, yes. Where did you get the instruments from? That was the instruments I took from EMI. And I kept paying for years. After Grandstand, Ogo State Hotel. And that's it. Can you tell me the story of your journey? You know, and uh, what brought you to the United Kingdom? <clears throat> My wife came to England with the when we were going to do Shrinkers play, the artificial of a boy. They came with my children because she was supposed to take care, take part in the program. And my children also had to take part in the program. And they saw me in the production. So we, we came, that's that showing us a presentation of a boy. That was what put me in the big trouble with Abacha. After the program, there was after the play performed at the uh, West Yorkshire Playhouse for weeks. I couldn't go. I, I was actually preparing to go home. My wife was still going to be to remain here because she has other things to do. You understand me? But I was going to go back home. Now I was lucky in the sense that I. I, I wanted to go back on the 17th of December, but on the 14th of, of, of December, we did a, uh, an interview on BBC World Service. The director of the play mentioned my name. They have told us that we shouldn't mention names of those who took part in the play. You understand me? Yeah. Or she, 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 she mistakenly mentioned my name during the interview that Trujillo Ilano was a musician, was a director of music. So Abacha had that. That was when they told the, uh, his, uh, what was it called? His uh, security people to start looking out for me. Because they, they, they think that the place about soldiers, about the Abacha, about this, the Vietnamese you know, area boy, that the, the soldiers were area boy. You understand me? So that's why. And then, so fortunately for me, some people in Nigeria who are in high position in the ministry, in the, uh, some in Aso Rock, heard about this. And so they sent a message to me that I should not come back home. The SSS were looking for me all over the place. They went to my department. Fortunately, boy, one boy saw a gun drop from one of them, a revolver. Because they said they were sent from Atlaso Rock. They wanted them to come and perform Atlaso Rock for so this and that. That's the lie they told the my department and people who are attending to them. So one of them saw a gun drop from one of them and he quickly picked it up and kept it in the, the car. Aha, that one quickly sent me a message that those who came to the department to say they were going to give you a job at Azorok are lying, that a, a gun dropped from one of them. And fortunately, I saw the gun. So Baba, don't come home. Oh. Anyway, that was it was a tedious you know, time for me. Very tedious. So I decided to, to go to the US. You understand me? 
and left my, my family in Britain after the production. If you were president of Nigeria for mm -hmm. one day, for one day, what would be the only decision you would make? If I was the president, uh, okay, I wouldn't make any decision at all. I would just sit there for one day, and when the day is over, I will get out of the place. What do you enjoy most about the way you live this way? Appreciation of my marital life and the way my children behave. Talking about your children, is there any one of them who behaves like you? Who shows traits of behavior like yourself? No. Why is that so? They, because they are themselves. There's no, there's, there's no, there's no, none, none of them that has um, followed you in your music steps. They are all playing music, all. The youngest one is playing the violin, the keyboard, the guitar, and uh, what else? And uh, that's it. But they haven't yeah. done that, you know, professionally, have they? No, because they've, they've all graduated from disciplines. And the the this the the, the moment this uh, what do you call it this system that I'm going through now has been set up by my son. Is 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 he has set it up for me. He's given me. He, he does concerts. He does concerts. You no, know, um, fine concerts in different places. <laughs> Do you still play music? Do you still entertain in MUK? Do I do what? Do you still entertain in MUK? MUK is closed for now. Because my wife you know, wanted did so. That's it. I, I, I was just think I was just thinking about you. You know, you you're, you're even much older than Nigeria. You know, of all the presidents or heads of state in Nigeria, which one of them do you remember and uh, admire most? I have not admired any of them, and I don't think I will. Because I the uh, only one who would have been admired didn't get there as head of state, and that was Obafemi Femeolo. Why, why, why is that so? Uh, because I would would have been the the head of state that we never had. Do you sort of uh, have any feelings of uh, regret for growing old? Yeah. No, God forbid. I'm seeing my children growing. I'm seeing my wife doing well in life. Uh, I am people like you. I can still we can still meet and talk. Because we are not dead yet, and we are able to 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 uh, express ourselves, we are not blind. We are not, you know, deaf. We are not dumb. Thank God. So don't worry. Did you did you did you meet a certain gentleman called Ambrose Campbell? And what do you know of him? Baba, ah, he was Baba. So the certain gentleman, <laughs> he was Baba in those days. There was Ambrose Campbell. Ah, you, you can't talk, talk of that man like that. He's <laughs> an old man. <laughs> it's he, was, he died a long time ago. Um, anyway, we, we used to visit him, you know, uh, in those days. He went, in fact, it's probably when Orlando Julius was living in, uh, in his house. Um, we, look, a lot of things happened in Baba's life. And apart from that, all his songs were borrowed by all Nigeria highlight musicians. We all borrowed the songs and sang them. Wait, well, did you borrow those songs with his permission? No, with his permission. He didn't mind you singing the songs. All you, you may not do is really cut them the way he did. Baba was very easy to deal with. Before he died, some kids were going to start 
maybe pirating is uh, recording. But we we had to we had to get them to to, to stop. You know, we had to get them to stop. What what what, what did his music mean to you as you were growing it, up? It, it, it was the foundation of the music that people, highlight musicians in Nigeria were playing up to up, up right from Alaya to Obi Benson, they all sang and Mustambo songs. If you were asked, how did you meet your wife? You remember that? How did I meet, meet my wife? Meet your wife. Meet? Yes. Uh, <laughs> what a question. Well, the story that I heard, Tinji, was that you proposed to her the first day you met her. Yeah. No, no, that's not just proposing, proposing to her. No, I you just... You told her you were going to marry her the first day you uh, saw her. That was a joke that day. Not the was that a joke? Yeah, that was of the first day we meet her. It's, it's later when we are known as <laughs> a serious affair. You apparently are so happy with her. You know, I know. She, she, has changed, she has changed a lot of she has changed a lot of things in your life. Indeed, indeed, you're right. How I would you? As a swimming coach, I you know I was in the theater, and each time she she finished working, she would look in the theater before going to her hall. She just say hello to me and then walk to her idea hall, and all that. So. Somebody who actually cared for me, even when we were not, uh, you know, engaged or married or living together, you need to give such a person a lot of respect. And I did. Thank God. We are we are going to uh, take you on um, on a trip to an island in. In, in going on that trip to an island, you are required to take along with you five items. What might they be? I wouldn't know, because if I'm going somewhere, I will have to say that the first thing I want to take is make sure that I have my head with me. But I don't leave my head at home. That's number one. Number two, um, I take my guitar. I take yeah. my guitar. I take my Bible. Yeah. I take my uh, food. Everything I want to eat, I pack it. I know it's an island, though, but I still take some water with me. That's number four. Huh? Okay, the last thing I will take is my life. I won't leave my life at home. While you are there, away on this island, what would you be reflecting on? I have to think of my good health. I want to see what I can be, what I can, how I can maintain my good health. Then, you know, I have my family picture. I have to be thinking of my family all the time. I think it has been really wonderful talking with you, Tujo Yelano. Thank you. It's been fantastic. Um, it's been a pleasure having your company on this it's program. Pleasure having you on. We will talk again. I, yes. I, I, I don't think I, I can't remember what, what, what time I've gone through this kind of uh, exercise. I can't remember. But it's I, good for I, your health. But it's I, good for I, your health. Mm. And I wish you many more years in yes, advance. You too. That's been my guest on the program this week on the chat. I am Manny. Have a nice time.